In this part of the Animated News website series, we are going to focus on animating the loading skeletons and improving our page transitions. If you haven't already, check out the previous part of this series linked on screen and in the description down below. With that, let's jump in. Next, let's take a look at the loading skeletons for the content. So we'll see here if I refresh the page currently, we have these skeletons that I've already built out and put in on screen for a few seconds, and then we load to the actual content. So a couple of things we're gonna do here. First, let's make these actual skeletons a little bit more visually interesting as they're on the page. And then let's also think a little bit about the animations from going from the skeletons to the actual content, making it a little bit more smooth rather than just a simple replacement of content. So let's start with the skeletons. So we'll go to the article preview skeleton.tsx file, the component file. We'll see here the skeletons are right now just a bunch of divs. And what we're gonna do is add a pulsing animation to these skeletons as they're on screen. First, we're going to use something called the use time hook from frame or motion, and we'll just set a variable time to equal that. This essentially tells us the amount of time that has occurred since the component was loaded in, which can help play out some animations that we want to happen over time. Then next, what we're gonna do is create a variable called pulse opacity. And this will be the opacity of the skeletons over time. So for this, we're gonna use the use transform function from frame of motion. We're gonna say we want this pulse pass to be a function of this time, right? The amount of time that's occurred. And then we need to pass in two additional variables. The first is what are different points of time that we want to map certain values of opacity to. And we'll put that in an array. So we'll just for now, just say every second for the first three seconds. And then we'll pass a second array, which is what do we want the value of this pulse opacity to be at these different corresponding values of the time variable. In this case, we'll say, you know, at the beginning, we want a pass to be the one. After one second, we want a pass to be zero. And then we'll just keep flipping back and forth. And then we'll add one additional optional value, which will be just a configuration of the transform. And in this case, we'll add an ease. And in this case, I'll just use ease out built in from frame of motion. Great. And so with that, we have this pulse opacity value. So now we just need to attach it to the div. In this case, I'm just going to attach it to the overall div. First, we'll make this skeleton a motion div. And we'll import motion. And then we'll simply attach the pulse opacity value to opacity of this. Now, if I hit save, and if I refresh the page, you'll notice now that the skeletons are pulsing as we expected. So great, that's one thing down. But now we wanna to shift towards nicely animating from the skeletons to the actual content. And for that, we're gonna shift back to the index file, which is where we kind of have all these components laid out. So you'll notice here, there's a loading state that I've created here. For now, I've artificially set that loading state to exist for three seconds to kind of simulate content being fetched. And then based on the value of loading, if we say it's still loading, we'll show the skeletons here, three of them. If not, we actually show the article content. And so what we want to do here is first, we'll want to create a motion div out of these two divs we have here. So the loading div and the loaded div. Let's make these motion components. Motion and motion. On the loading div, we're gonna set some values again for frame of motion. So initial, we're gonna say opacity is zero. Animate, I need that comma, animate. I can spell opacity is one. And then exit opacity of zero. So that, have, that will have us fade in these skeletons and then fade them out as they're removed from the, from the tree. And then similarly on the loaded div, we're going to set initial opacity of zero. So initially it's invisible and then we'll animate that to an opacity of one. So this will have come and fade in when it's attached to the tree. So if we do that, if I hit save and I refresh this page, we still have the pulsing. 
okay. And we have this nice transition from one to the other. Now, there's something here that we can't really see here, but it's still good to point out. So right now, these two animations of these two divs will happen at the exact same time. So as the skeletons are fading out, the article content is loading in at the same time. Ideally, what we want is we want first the skeletons to fade out, and then only after that's done to have the content fade in. Again, it's like a little bit tricky to see here because of the specifics of how this animation is set up now, but let's just go ahead and, and set that up to make sure it's happening in sequence. So for that, we're going to use animate presence again, just like we did for the navigation drawer. So this will make sure that things are animated in and out as they are loaded and unloaded from the DOM. And then we're going to add here something called mode weight. This tells animate presence if something is removed and if something is added, wait until the thing has been removed and then you can add the new thing. So now if I refresh the page, it won't look very different, but now underneath the hood, we know for a fact that these things are happening in sequence. We can actually apply the similar concept of animate presence to also animate between pages. And so for that, on these pages, let's just add some frame or motion properties to have it nicely do a fade in and fade out of the overall page as we move from one link to another. So for that, let's start with the index page. So this main tag, let's make it a motion main. And then for this, I'm just going to go ahead and set a exit value of opacity zero. So as this gets off, we're going to fade out. Now let's go ahead and also add some an, an animation to the article page as well to kind of tie to this fading out of the main page. So we'll go into pages, article, this id.tsx file, and we will Go on the, again, the main tag here and make these motion, motion main tag. And we'll set, again, a couple of values. So we'll say the initial, let's say again, opacity zero. So we're gonna have it fade in. So animate opacity one. And then when this is removed, again, we'll fade it out. So even as we do that, if I click, you'll see it fades in. But it's a little bit, again, difficult to see a little bit right now because it's happening instantaneously, the fade out and the fade in. And so for that, let's go back to the app.tsx file. For this component here, which is actually the individual page to get it swapped in and out, we're going to surround this with an animate presence. And we're going to add a mode weight. And so now, if I go back, let this load in again. Now, if I click on one of the pages, you can see it fades out and then fades in. So it's very clearly happening in sequential order, which is really, really nice. Again, thanks to this mode weight under animate presence. Finally, I'm just going to go and apply these animations that we had in index.tsx for the skeletons and the content into the category pages as well. So this is, again, just a list of pages for different categories. So let's say for technology as well. So let me just go ahead and do that really quickly. And now you can see I've made these all motion components. And I've also added in the animations for fading in and fading out and also surrounding this in animate presence, exactly the same as index.tsx. And so now if I go to one of the pages, which I hit save and refresh. If I switch to one of these other pages, you'll see here, it also nicely transitions because I've added this exit property as well to the overall motion component. And so if I switch back, again, it nicely fades between the pages. In the next part, we will work on animating the size of the top nav bar based on page scrolling. I'll release the next part one week after this video is up. So be sure to get subscribed to get notified when it's live. I'll also link it on screen once it becomes available and I will see you there.